I'll start off with a little bit about where I come from. Um, and I just typed everything out. When I try to say a lot, it goes in circles, like right now, anyway. I'll start off with a little bit about myself and where I come from. I was born in Mexico and lived there until I was 11. In 1986, our parents moved us to Alberta, left, every friend, uh, left, left friends and family behind, and uh, we lived there for two years, and we didn't know anybody there and, and besides uh, an, aunt, an uncle and um, their kids. It was a brand new start. We lived there for two years and then moved to Ontario with a turn of events. We ended up here. I grew up in a Christian home with my mom and dad, Peter and Sarah Clausen, and three sisters, Annie, Justina, Martha, and two brothers, Johnny and Neil. Um, <clears throat> I met Dave in my early teens, and we got married on November 21st, 1992, at the Mount Salem EMC Church as many of you did. <clears throat> Remember that nice background they had there? We all have those wedding pictures of that background. <laughs> I just turned, <clears throat> excuse me, I had just turned 18 and Dave was 21. God knew my future and he knew that I needed this man in my life so he could fulfill his plan for us. We are happily married now for 27 years. So, you see, young people, it's okay to get married young. It's okay. My story today <clears throat> is about God had, has led me through and how he adds and fills, fulfills my personal desires amongst his plan for me. Sometimes they are desires that I hadn't even thought of. But God knows us better than we do ourselves. Psalm 37, 4 says, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. God wants us to desire him first, and my desires is to delight in the Lord. <coughs> Every other desire <coughs> is second. <coughs> Jaron was already looking at me like, what's with my throat today? There are many things that have happened throughout um, my life so far, where I can so clearly see God working my desires into his plan for me. After we got married, we lived here in Ontario for seven months, and then God called us to move to Manitoba. I didn't want to move, but I had never been in Manitoba, so I was okay with it, something different. I had actually set my heart on getting a job <clears throat> at the new plant that was being built and St. Thomas at that time, format. I really wanted to work there, really wanted to work there. And I also wanted to go back to school one day and finish my high school. I dropped out of high school before I was done grade 12. Not a good idea. But we made the move, and after a few weeks of being in a new place, I was bent on moving back home. Ontario was my home, and I was not happy there. In Manitoba. I'm a people person and was used to the busyness we have here in Ontario. Traffic everywhere, things to do like theme parks, beaches, friends, church, warm weather, and I could go on. And out there I felt like life had come to dead stop. I think I was in culture shock. Some of, the, some of you here <clears throat> know what I'm talking about, right? Anne? Life was so different there for me. After a few months, I had made a few friends and got a waitress job at a Chinese restaurant, and I love Chinese food. I was nervous and excited. Never had I ever thought that I would work in a Chinese restaurant. God just fulfilled one of my desires unknown to myself. I loved my new job and was thankful, but I was, but I wanted, <clears throat> but what I wanted more than ever or anything was to move back home. Dave got a, had a job, but was also working on getting his AZ truck license. I was very happy about that. 
here was my way back to Ontario. Dave would make his license and he would have a trip to Ontario and I would go with him and stay there while he would go out on other runs. Well, Dave was denied to make his license. He failed his eye exam. It didn't make any sense because he didn't even need glasses. So he <clears throat> appealed it and again they said no. They could not grant him his license because of his eyes and to pretty much not bother again. I was broken. But looking back, it would have been detrimental to our marriage. But God already knew. He had his plan for us <clears throat> laid out. He wanted us right where we were, away from distractions, somewhere where we had to rely on each other. He wanted us to build our marriage. About a year into our life, I applied at a factory and I got a full-time job there. After all, I had wanted to work at Format in Ontario. God just fulfilled another one of my desires. <clears throat> and not only did he fulfill my desire to work in a factory, he kept me from the hard jobs that would be harmful for my body. See, God already knew I would go through things that I would need a stronger body for. Hence, a big kid back there. <laughs> God's plan for us was, <clears throat> was at work. Jeremiah 29, 11 comes to mind. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. How meaningful. I worked at this factory for six years. It was a good, good place to work. I made many friends, and we got to go to Ontario several times for vacation, another desire fulfilled amongst his plan for me. While I was working there, although very thankful, I started to realize that factory, factory work was not <clears throat> going to be for me for very long. I wanted more out of life than an eight-hour job. It was very repetitive, yeah. My desire for working there was fading. I started to desire working in a restaurant again, maybe run my own one day. I desired to be a stay-at-home wife. I desired to focus on God more. After about five years in Manitoba, God led us to a wonderful church, Stony Brook EMC, in Steinbeck, another desire fulfilled. Until then, we weren't focused on finding a church. Although it was often in the back of our mind, <clears throat> Dave often talked about having a child or two and often teased me that I should be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. But I always said to him that I did not really want any children, especially not as long as we were away from family and not attending a church. And if we had children, my desire was to have two boys with dark hair and at least one of them with blue eyes. This is where we really started to grow in our faith and our marriage became stronger yet. After having been so bent on moving back to Ontario, I was finally asking God to bring us back home in his time, not my time, his time. We were now making church friends and loving life, loving life and for the first time I was happy there. I had, not, I had now put my faith in God and he would move us back if it was his will. About two years later, just as we started to be at peace and life was good, God decided it was time. I had surrendered to him and he was going to fulfill a huge desire of my, for me. He was going to move us back to Ontario. Praise the Lord, a huge desire, desire fulfilled. I will never forget the day I decided to let Jesus take the wheel and the day that we were given the okay by God to move back home. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, but they that wait on the Lord, upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Year 2000 was a big year. <clears throat> we were back in Ontario, and God was still working. I started looking for a job here. I was led to a hiring company. From there, they placed you wherever someone was hiring. And to my astonishment, I was placed at, you guessed it, format. Isn't God amazing? Desire fulfilled. Proverbs 
5, 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Wow. God allowed me to work there for eight months, just long enough to realize that 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 was not what I wanted in the long run, and just long enough so that I could... Nerves are kicking in now. And just long enough so that I could apply for EI and go to school to get my high school diploma and get paid for it, bonus. Yep, another desired fulfilled. While in school, God also decided it was time for us to start a family. After all, we were now back in Ontario and we're attending a church, this church, another desire fulfilled. He took our first, <clears throat> he took our first one home to heaven before he or she was born. That was very hard. Shortly after we conceived again, I was pregnant and doing well in school God's work in progress. One of my favorite courses in school was biology. I learned so much there. Here again, God was working, and I didn't even know it yet. August 5th, 2002, we were blessed with a beautiful, <clears throat> wonderful first baby boy. What a joy. We named him Dalen James. Day for Dave and Lynn for Linda. Day Lynn. Now you know why it's Dalen and not Dylan or Dallin or Dalin or Dalton or whatever people have been calling him. It's Dalen. But something was not right. He wasn't breathing. They took him, and after about 20 minutes, they brought him back to us, and we held our precious baby. As I was holding him, he was jittery. I kept wrapping him up more and more because I thought he was cold. Then Dave took him and nurses came to check on us. And Dave asked the nurse, why are his lips so blue? She looked at him and she said, they are bluer than what we'd like. She took him and left the room. After a little while, they came back and said they would keep him in the, they would keep Dalen in the NICU overnight and to monitor him. This being our first baby, we didn't think anything of it. I actually thought that was, that it was a good, that it was good because then I could, sleep all night. Next morning, while still asleep, some doctors and nurses came to wake me up and they had Dalen in an, in an incubator hooked up to all kinds of tubes and wires. I was still recovering from all meds they, had, they gave me from the night before. My head was clear, wasn't clear, and they were asking me so many questions about our family medical history. And they told me that the jitters Dalen had had were most likely seizures. And this is where my favorite course in school came to play, biology, part of God's plan coming to light. I was understanding a lot of what they were talking about and cause, because of the biology course I had taken. That day, they did a bunch of tests, EEG, MRI, blood work, all kinds. That whole day was surreal. That evening, the neurologist and a nurse came into my room and asked Dave to have a seat. And he told us what, had, what they found. They found that Dylan had had a stroke six to eight weeks prior to birth and another one shortly before birth and that they did not know why he had those strokes um, that distance apart and why he had a stroke because he had a clot in his vena cava, which had let go six to eight weeks before, and they could see that on the MRI, because the brain shrinks once the brain has been damaged. So they knew how far the brain had shrunk. They know how fast the brain shrinks, and in six weeks, that's how far it would have shrunk. That's why they knew it was six to eight weeks before. <clears throat> and to this day, like I said, they don't know why those two strokes happen in that time here, like why that far apart or why another one at all. And the prognosis would reveal itself as he would grow. And so our precious baby boy was diagnosed with quadriplegic cerebral palsy, two strokes, one on each side of his brain, 
And we were at a complete loss. But God already knew. He knew that the tough times that we were going to go through. He had our new world in his hands. We were taken care We were taken care so well in the hospital, and after 11 days, Dalen was discharged, and we got to take him home. And we have never been left alone since. There are so many services available through the government for disabled children. It's just incredible. We live in a great country. At two years old, Dalen had to get a feeding tube. He simply couldn't swallow properly and would aspirate his food into his lungs, resulting in pneumonia, and therefore was in a hospital most of the time. We were at the end. If if something wasn't done, Dalen would not be with us much longer. It was so scary. One day after church, Dave Dave told me he had asked the Board of Elders and our pastor, Richard Clausen, to come over and pray over Dalen. They were very willing, and as it says in James 5, 14, verse 15, is anyone among you sick? Let them call the board of elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will, be, will make the sick, sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. And that's what they did. They came and laid their hands on Dalen, prayed, anointed him in the name of the Lord. So now what? We didn't know what to think. We went on with our days as per usual. After two weeks of the prayer and anointing, Dalen became very ill. We rushed him to the hospital once again and again. Immediately he was admitted. He was so sick. Some of the board Members asked us how we felt towards God. After all, we had just asked God, we had just asked them to, after all, we had just asked them to pray over him and the Bible says, as the Bible says, and yet Dalen, here Dalen was so very ill. We both said, no, we are not mad at God. We had peace that surpassed our understanding. And it was because God was carrying us with us was carrying us without apprehending it at that time. And we said that if God was going to heal Dalen by taking him home, then we were willing to accept that no matter how hard. And God did answer. He worked he works in mysterious ways. Jeremiah thirty three verse three says, Call on me in prayer and I will answer you. I will show you great and mysterious things which you still do not know about. God had allowed Dalen to get so sick again because God wanted the doctors to see what needed to be done to get Dalen out of the string of so many pneumonias. And all it took was a second tube in his stomach for venting so that he would not bring up and aspirate it back into his lungs, whatever formula was. It's a long story, medical terms and stuff that I just won't go into right now. But anyway, he, he would bring it up, inhale it in his lungs, and now the tube that was placed there, whatever he would bring up, just goes into the tube now. So that way he doesn't, that's why he has two tubes. Since then, Dalen has very few hospital trips. Praise the Lord. God worked and answered prayer. We had started to see God... We had started to see why God wanted to strengthen our marriage before he brought us back to Manitoba. March 22nd, 2007, we were so blessed with another little boy, totally healthy, Jaron Lucas. I now had my two boys, both with dark hair, and guess what? One of them has blue eyes. (laughs) It's Dalen. More desires fulfilled. Our boys are very different but equally loved. Dalen sits and melts our hearts as he sits there and smiles so often. And Jaron runs around, hurts himself, jumps off stairs, breaks his ankle, not quite, but, and does whatever Dalen can't and melts our hearts. 
As time went on, seeking God's will and letting him work and answering many of our prayers, which I won't take time to talk about all of them now, but there's many, God decided it was time to fulfill another one of my long-time desires. Can anyone ask, uh, guess? Can anyone tell me what that is? <laughs> yes. I am currently the proud owner of Elmer Burgerstead. You yeah, praise the Lord. God gave me a little restaurant, not a big one, just the right one, because he knew that big would be too much to handle for us with Dalen, and um, little would be perfect, and we get so busy there. God fulfilled so many desires of mine, and he will continue. I have many more desires. I have full faith. Like Psalm 37, 4 says, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. What a wonderful promise. Thank you. I thought uh, going second was a good idea. It's not. My name is Dave Wall. I was born in 1971. Uh, Mexico. <clears throat> I'll talk a little bit about my early years of my life. I was born first into a family that uh, my dad was not part of my family as of I was one years old. I remember the first words he ever said to me. I met him three times in my life. The first words he ever said to me was, Kansminach, five years old. That's the only memory I have. Up to that point, I have absolutely no memories of my early days. And I have very few after that till I get quite a bit older. Those words caught me back then. They're simple words, Kansminach. Yeah, I didn't know him. Three times, the third time after I met him, Guess what the first words he said to me? That was then, 20 years later. I still didn't know him. He was upset. He called my older brother. He had been upset that I didn't know him, that I didn't give him any attention. But to me, he was a 100% stranger. So I want to encourage the men in this church, or I want to encourage the men in this whole community, is if you think that you are not worth something in your family home, then you have another thing coming. It took me years, and that it was well in my adult years or whatever, it took me years to understand why God loved me. Everybody always said, you have a Heavenly Father, He loves you. And to me, there were, that, that was one of those things that I just could not comprehend. I could not comprehend that a man that had actually fathered me, whatever, wanted nothing to do with me, and uh, a heavenly father that I had never met, never seen, how uh, he would love me. So that steered a good part of my life, my early life, into a direction that wasn't necessarily very good. I became a Christian in 1989. I was baptized in 1989. In uh, Matthew 12, 45, 43, it says, where it says, when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through an arid place, seeking rest, does not find. It will return to the house I have left, and it arrives, finds a house, on a complete swept, cleaned, put in order, and goes and takes it, put in order. That's exactly what I did in 1989. I cleaned my house. I put it in order. But then it says, after that, in the next verses, it says, Something comes back, and he takes seven more with it. It says, with its seven other spirits come more wicked than itself. Come and go in and live there. And the final, and the final condition of that person is worse than the first. The reason I'm not saying these things or whatever is that's exactly what happened to me. In 1989, I became a Christian. I cleaned my house. But the one thing that I did not do and why, what, they were, what, the, what the leadership was talking about here before is mentoring. That is absolutely unbelievably important in a family and a person like myself that does not have a home. I grew up in a Christian home. My mom was a Christian, but my mom couldn't steer me. That wasn't her job. Her job was to 
She did everything she could to feed us, never mind steering us spiritually. <coughs> That's why when I say these, when I read these verses, they mean a lot to me because this is exactly what happened to me. I had nobody that mentored me. Yes, I became a Christian. I got baptized in 1989. But from that point on, nobody ever really, nobody ever came and asked me, how are you doing spiritually? It was like, well, now you're in it. You're in this church, whatever, and you should know better, right? <clears throat> and that's why I want to say it to the young people today that are getting baptized. I says, you have to feel, you have to fill your heart with the bread of life, which it says in Matthew 6, 25, 40. Uh, it says, it's a bit of a, of a read or whatever, but uh, it says, when they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and you had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but work for the food that endures eternal life. And that's what I want to encourage young people with. You have to, you have to absolutely fill yourself. You have to. You have to listen to music. You have to read the Bible. You have to fill yourself. If you do not, what happened to me, that put me in bondage for almost 27 years, can happen to you. As long as, uh, as you are not walking, as long as you're walking your own way or whatever, the devil doesn't really care. The moment you decide you want to walk for Jesus, he cares. He's lost somebody. And that's why it's so important to do that. I was a... Uh, in 1989, I completely gave up smoking. I gave up drinking uh, for a couple of months. I was very prideful that uh, how easy that had been for me. And uh, that I couldn't, when the first time a friend offered me a smoke again, uh, like I was thinking to myself that um, that was so easy the first time around. If I had one cigarette, it wouldn't matter. Well, it didn't matter. I smoked for 27 years. Uh, and uh, I fought and struggled every which way. But I was still a Christian, though, but I was living in bondage. And uh, I don't necessarily, I don't believe that, that smoking would have gotten me into hell. But smoking did something to me. And that has kept me from, from um, participating in church, looking for things to do, actually be willing to work in church. So it kept me back from the blessings that God had for me because of what I was doing. I am so thankful that God, when I was finally ready, that God finally answered my prayer. I had been praying for a long time that he would give me, uh, that he would give me peace over that, and I did. I have now been clear for over seven years, but I have no desires to go back. So I won't go much longer because we're looking at 12 o'clock, but... I just want to read a little bit more uh, about the bread of life, or whatever. It says, Do not work for food that spoils, but for the food that endures eternal life. When the Son of Man will give you for him, God, has, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to, to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So, that, so they asked him, What signs then will you give? that we may see it and believe it. What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven a, to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is the Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. My absolute favorite verse has become is, Yet to all who do receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. That to me is my absolute, just by far my favorite verse right now. That I am actually, I am a child of God. I am God's child. I am his. And I just ask that you pray for me as we continue, uh, or as I continue with, with different things that I want to do and stuff like that, that I would have the courage to keep doing them. Thank you very much for listening.